Hi, this is Robin, and this video is going to be part of what I call my sort of short series. So it's not the full length video workshops. It's it's going to be a shorter, quicker topic on a specific application in Photoshop. Specifically, I'm going to be talking about how to create contact sheets in Photoshop and their relevance in a digital photography world. Now, if you're not familiar with a contact sheet, let me just start by defining what that is. So this is an example of a magnum, a vintage magnum contact sheet here. So contact sheets started in the film photography era. And what photographers would do was print image thumbnails for their film negatives on photographic paper in the darkroom for review. And you can see that this is very typical, the layout. So the lim images were laid out in grids of columns and rows, and then they would mark them up with grease pencils and annotate them. So this one has, you know, some squares around the picture of the group that they thought would be one of the pictures they thought would be worth printing. And this one, not only did they think it's worth printing, but they're showing where they would want the crop marks to be out of the entire image. So that's very typical of what they do. Sometimes they'd put X's, sometimes they'd put check marks, but out of a series of images, they would then pick the ones that they thought would be most effective that they'd want to print. Now, just because for the most part, we now have software systems like Lightroom or Bridge or whatever that let us view digital camera images side by side and assign star ratings to them so you can sort using the star ratings, it doesn't mean that contact sheets are obsolete. I believe that they still have value and are useful in a number of ways. So that's why I wanted to show here in Photoshop how we can create our own contact sheets that we can still use in a digital photography world. Now, before I get into the very brief demo of how to create a contact sheet, again, I just want to talk about some of the benefits or uses for contact sheets in this digital photography era, just to spark some ideas for you. So first of all, you can see as this is evidence of a cross section of images look on different papers. So if you're going to be printing your images, even if they start out in digital form and you don't want to waste expensive fine art papers, printing a bunch of fine uh, art full size prints, then you can do a contact sheet with all the potential images you might want to print on different single pages of fine art paper and see which paper presents your images the best. Uh, if you have not done so and examined and explored different fine art papers, they can make or break your images and can look quite different. So this way you can get a bunch of images onto a single piece of paper without spending a lot of money and see which type of paper is going to best support and best show off your images. So that's one application. Also, if you're going to be printing or showing images in hard copy form, well, people aren't going to always be sitting in front of a computer because it's hard copy. So by printing out a contact sheet of your images that you want to put together in print form, you can then take that contact sheet over near the light or not the light or places where people might be reading or looking at if you're looking at a photo book of yours or if they're looking at pictures of yours if it's going to hang on the wall you can put it in the kind of light that your image is going to be in and you cannot do that from a computer screen or a tablet it's not going to look the same as taking a printed piece of paper over to the light so that's another benefit um, also, what I found and what I've used contact sheets for the most for my personal use is uh, to use them to sequence a set of images for a photo book, a portfolio, an exhibition, an editorial layout, if you're a wedding photographer for a wedding album. It's just in any other kind of application where you might want to sequence images. So if you have a bunch of images like this that you might want to include in any one of those kind of contexts, you can assemble them onto the contact sheet, 
cut these thumbnails apart and very easily rearrange them. It's like the puzzle pieces. And it's so much easier to do that when you have the hard copy than it is when it's in digital form. I know I remember seeing a, a documentary about Annie Leibovitz doing that when she was trying to visualize how to lay out her images and in what order for a book and also for an exhibition. And it you could just see she'd move the pieces of paper that she had taped to the wall around and she'd build the story and then change the story. And it was just so much easier easier to do it in hard copy. So something to think about with that. Also, um, something like a contact sheet is a great way to give a client something that they can look at as a photo gallery that then they can select from and say, okay, I want this one and this one and this one or whatever, you know, of your images. That way you're not giving them all your digital images and they you can control what you're printing for them based on their selections. Another application, if you're a teacher or a professor and have students who want to submit photo projects or assignments, well, having them do it, if only for an interim step before they do their final that they're going to hand in, this can give you an idea of what they're doing and if they need to change direction or else it can just be the final assignment is handed in in this format for you to grade. So something like that. And then one last example that I can think of, because I used to work in the fashion business way back when, and uh, that's modeling agencies will often require sets of images of models from fashion or beauty photographer shoots. And it also will let them help the models learn which poses are most effective. So you can even use it to show if you're going to have models or someone posing for you, which kind of poses that you think would work best or you'd like them to be prepared to be able to assume as you go through the photo shoot. So that's something else. And then the one last thing related to that in the models is that a contact sheet and or prints can become a bartering tool for you to give new models in exchange for them uh, t giving you their time posing for free. So they get the pictures, you get their time, and they get to learn some modeling experience. And it's called TFP or time or trade for photo. So rather than paying them a fee if they're a newbie model, you can give them something like this or a print. It's up to you. So anyway, with that background behind us about what a contact sheet is and how you can use them, now let's just get into how to build one here in Photoshop. So I'm going to close this out. Okay, so we're in the Photoshop interface, and what we want to do is come to the upper left to the File menu right up here where my highlighter is. File, click, come down to Automate and then fly out and come down to where it says Contact Sheet 2. So File, Automate, Contact Sheet 2, and left click on that. And you'll get this Contact Sheet 2 pop-up box, and you get to set up or decide what the parameters are before it actually will build it. So the very first thing is the area of that you have to address first are the source images. And you tell the Contact Sheet uh, interface what to use. I personally prefer to have the images that I want to go into the contact sheet already into a folder, but you do have the choice of specifying individual files or the folder. So I'm leaving mine set to folder because I have put 12 images already into a folder and here you can choose it where you want that folder or those files to be. So I'm going to left click on choose and it'll take me to my desktop. And I'm going to choose the folder that says 12 images for contact sheet. So just left click on that and say OK. So you, wherever yours is, yours does not have to be on your desktop. If it's in one of your file hierarchies, that's perfectly fine too. So wherever you want to grab it from, just know that once you decide what you want to go on the contact sheet, you'll have to choose it from on your computer. Um, I leave it set to include subfolders, even though I don't have any subfolders. If you're going to use more than one folder that you want to combine, you can decide whether you want them to just all blend across all the folders or if you want them to be separated by folder. So since I only have one folder, I'm not going to bother to check that. Okay, so the next area we come down to for the setup purposes is called document. 
and then you decide what you want the dimensions of your contact sheet to be. So I'm in the US, I work with inches, so I'm going to use inches, but you also have a choice of centimeters and pixels, so I'm going to leave this on inches for me. Uh, even though a standard piece of paper is 8.5 by 11, I don't want it going all the way out to the margins, so I am going to have mine set to 8 by 10 inches. Again, decide for yourself what you prefer for yours. I like to use a high resolution partly for some of those reasons that I mentioned as far as applications for it, but just so I can tell better what the images look like. So I use a 300 versus like a 72. And again, because of my measurements that I work with, it's 300 pixels per inch, but you do have a choice of pixels per centimeter if you want. I work personally uh, with Adobe RGB 1998. So that's what I have my color profile set to in Photoshop. That's what I have my camera capture set to to tag images. So depending on the profile that you use, you can click on this little down arrow and then choose the color profile that you want to work with for your contact sheet. Still here in document, you can decide whether you want it to flatten all layers. So I do not want mine flattened. I want each of my images that's going to be in my contact sheet on its own layer in case I want to turn something off or adjust something in some way. But you can click that on if you want to end up with a single flattened contact sheet layer. So again, if you want to send somebody something and you don't want them to have all those layers and have access to all those layers, then you can save it as a different name and uh, do a flatten all layers if you prefer. Also, the mode, you have to specify the mode you want to use. So usually image uh, adjustments mode is where you'd find the mode. And I'm working with RGB color. Now, again, I had mentioned photo books or things like that. If you are working with a commercial publisher, they may want you to be working with CMYK color. So just use the color mode that is appropriate for what you're working with. But for most people in ordinary circumstances, unless you're going to be doing a purely monochrome book uh, or something of that nature, then RGB color would be sufficient. And then choose the bit depth. So I like the higher end 16 bit, but you can decide if you want 8 bit. So again, I like higher quality with the 300 and the 16. Then we come down to the thumbnails and the layout of the contact sheet. So this under here for the thumbnails, it's saying, how do you want them placed? You can choose to go across first, so across rows, or you can down first, so down columns first. So you can choose your preference in which way it's going to lay out your images. Also, you can specify the number of columns and rows. Now, as they said, I have 12 images in mind, so I've got four columns and three rows. Personally, I'd say don't cram them too close together because then you won't be able to either cut them apart, like I said, if you want to do that type of thing and they'll be too tiny to see too well, or it's just going to jam them up too much together. So you can certainly go to multiple sheets as you prefer, but I'd say don't cram too many on the same page. Now, you also have the option to rotate for best fit. I like to keep mine checked on. You can turn that off. So what this is going to do is this will turn any of my vertical orientation images so that they're in a landscape orientation. So everything's going to be in the same orientation for what I want. But as I said, I cut things apart, so it's not going to affect me. If you want to be able to look across your sheet and see things oriented in the correct image orientation for each image, then I'd say probably don't rotate for best fit. But if you want efficient use of the contact sheet space, then I would recommend rotate for best fit. And that's what I do. I also use auto spacing. So again, it's just being efficient with the use on the contact sheet. If you click that off, you can specify what spacing you want for your layout. And uh, you can alternate these, alter these numbers as you wish. So I'm going to put that back on because I like auto. Okay, and then finally, the last choice is whether you want to use your file name for your images as a caption. I leave mine set to off again because that takes up space on the contact sheet. You may like it to help remember which image is which. If you want to have the file name listed underneath each image, 
then you can click that on and then choose the font with the little down arrow and whether it's going to be a regular or bold or whatever depending on the font it will have different choices and the point size but i don't like to have that taking up space i just want it to be purely images so you can decide for yourself all right so once you get all the formatting stuff laid out as you wish then you come to the upper right here and click ok and it will start building. Can you see in the center of my highlighter that Photoshop is thinking and spinning and doing stuff? And it's going to that folder that I told it to work with and starting to assemble my contact sheet for me. So here we go. So now Photoshop has constructed a contact sheet with the 12 images. So you can see the four, as, is, as I specified, we've got these four columns and three rows for the 12 images. And so again, what I would do personally is cut these apart and then use that as a way to rearrange these pieces and sequence and, and say, okay, what order do I want this story to flow if I'm building a photo book or going to present a gallery or something like that. Now, the other way you can use it, as I said, it kind of gives you a macro view of your images. So it's not even necessarily like, oh, this picture is better than that picture. It's sort of like, which one looks best in the context of the other pictures? So when we look over here in the layers panel, you can see each of these images has now been, since I did not, did not say flatten, has its own layer. And we can look at the contact sheet and say, okay, let's just look at the two deer pictures. Here's this one you can see is in the center middle. So I'm assuming that's that one there. If I turn that little eye off for the visibility, there it goes. So you can look and say, all right, which do I like better? Do I really need two deer pictures in this story? Or in your case, whatever it is you might have multiples of. Is it that the better deer picture to include? Or should I keep this one? Which is going to be best in the context of all so it's just easy to turn it on and off and then you can leave it off if you want to print it without it or redo another contact sheet but essentially that is it you know in terms of how it builds the contact sheet one other thing i'll show you with this so once you get all your images and you might have more than 12 but you can see I wouldn't personally want to go much smaller than this because then you get to see bet the better how the images look together. If I drag my scroll bar down here and click on this background layer, if you want this to look like the classic vintage contact sheets I just showed you, with your background layer active in your layers panel, you can come to the bottom of the layers panel to the add new adjustment layer. That's that circle with the line through it. Left click on that. Come to solid color. Left click. And look at this. So with the, whatever color you want. So let's say we want black because we want it to look like those vintage contact sheets as the chosen color from the color picker. Click OK. And now with that color fill layer above that you now have your images on a black layer that looks more like a vintage contact sheet you can change this to if you want it on more of a medium gray you can do that if you're going to be in an exhibition in a museum or a gal or local gallery or something and they're going to say well i just want you to be aware that our walls are painted a sort of a khaki-ish green color or something then you can try your images that you're thinking of submitting for the gallery on the same color that their walls are going to be painted and say oh you know now is this going to just fade away should i maybe substitute one of my other images based on you know what will show best on that background so this is what i said the benefits of the contact sheet are you can just use it in so many different ways so as I said, this is meant to just be short and quick and give you a tool that you could have at your disposal to an analyze all your fine art photography. That's the demo. I hope you find some cool ways for a Photoshop contact sheet to help you in working with your images, no matter how you plan to use them.